What's going on, everybody? It is 2.26 p.m. Saturday, August the 21st, 2021. Um, yeah, hope everybody's having a good weekend. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on in the market. Nothing super crazy, but we got some news. We got some charts. Uh, and we got some domain names for you guys today. Make sure you're following me at True Perception 3 on Twitter. It is much appreciated. I love being part of the community and everything. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, make sure you hop on over and like the video. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And I am starting a new playlist, I believe. I actually have it marked as private right now. So let me... Uh, where is it at? Here we go. I don't know how to change it. Let me see. I'm just going to do it while I'm on here with you guys. This will be public. This is one of my favorite motivational speakers. I will be posting everything I watch in there from his channel on here. That's Eric Thomas. He's the number one motivational speaker in the world. Make sure you check him out. All right. Um, and I keep talking about my domains and stuff every now and then, so I just wanted to put them up on the screen. I haven't even claimed all of them because I bought so many of them. They're like 40, 50 bucks a piece to claim, so I just haven't even dealt with it. But I do have some interesting ones. I have zero doubt.zil. We've got uh, codius.x from the ashes.x, headshotphotographer.crypto, headshotphotography.crypto. Uh, Let me show you is my photography company's slogan, so, or lo whatever you want to call it. So you can see plenty of that. We have quickswap.bitcoin, sw quickswap.888, realestatephotographer.crypto, and realestatephotography.crypto. These are my two specialties that I do is interior photography and headshots. That's why I have those. This is my former boss who hit me with the egregious non-compete. I made sure he could not get a dot crypto ever. Um, these are not for sale. Snowbunnies.x and snowbunny.x. I just went along with the adult theme. That's like the only thing I could think of that wasn't just like gross. That, you know, so I figured somebody might buy them one day. We got southwestflorida.crypto. That's where I live, so that's why I got it. The ripple effect.x. We got trueperception.nfts, which will eventually be my NFT website once the XRPL launches their NFT platform. Trueperception.888, which will probably be a charity thing. Trueperception.x, trueperception.crypto, which is where you can send me cryptocurrencies. Um, and trueperceptionimages.crypto, that is my photography company. And then we have trueperceptioninvestments.crypto, which is obviously this channel. And we have truthseeker.888. If any of those are of interest, a lot of them are not listed on any websites now because they have not been claimed. Feel free to hit me up. I would recommend contacting me on Twitter via DM. That would probably be the only way to ensure that I actually get the message and don't miss it. So with all that being said, let's move on. All right, guys. So we're just going to run through this stuff real quick. Not a whole lot has changed, but we do have some action. Cardano blasted up through the all-time high. And now it's kind of just hanging out right in that range. Hasn't really taken back off or anything, but it's it's not dropping or anything either. We're just kind of hanging out there. You always got to remember, things don't go up in a straight line forever. They don't go down in a straight line forever. Markets move in waves, and we can go through and see, here's a straight line, then waves. Here's a straight line with some waves, a straight line with some waves, a bunch of waves, straight line. You know, it's what it does. It's what all markets have always done. It's what all markets will probably always do. Um, so let's bust out of that. We have Bitcoin. We haven't been covering Bitcoin as much recently, but that is going to change because Bitcoin is getting into action Jackson mode. Uh, judging from the point of capitulation, we have pretty much slammed into the 702, broken the 618, and here we are battling up. Um, you know, it's looking good. You got one, two, and maybe this is three. You know, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I'm not real good at that stuff. Elliott waves and ABC corrections and all that stuff, I, but I do understand fibs. So that's what I just go by. Um, and, and here it is, right where it's supposed to be, just like the rest of the market. Moving on to ETH. Let's go back over here, get this up to par. We got ETH over here in the, in the grand scheme of things, battling at the 618, kind of doing its thing there. If you bring it down to the last green candle before capitulation i guess it doesn't really tell a story so we'll just stick with where it is sometimes sometimes you'll see why it makes a little bit more sense when you do that that was not the case there here we have solana no need to really zoom in too much on that it has blasted up to the 1.618 um met a little bit 
a resistance there, but it's still just fluttering right underneath of it. I mean, this thing has been raging. It's probably just cooling off and taking a break. That has been the main leader in the entire market. Uh, this is selected because I was telling a buddy of mine that after the last four-year cycle, we experienced a 88% drop in the entire crypto market. I don't think we'll see a correction quite that big again, but let's keep in mind, guys. Let's go over here to where we are now. And just to give you a, a little bit of a heads up, the total crypto market has slammed right into the 702 and is now hanging out right underneath of it. So, you know, everything is going where it's supposed to go. Everything's getting resistance for the most part, except for these few leaders have started to break through. It's very promising. I'm very optimistic, but I'm also not a fortune teller. So who knows? Even though I don't think it'll be an 88% drop, keep in mind, guys, we did just experience a 56% drop when everything hit the fan. So, like, don't think that uh, this thing can't can't roll over on itself because it can. It's a very early early in this uh, asset class, you know. It is not really, like, fully established yet. So, there's just something to keep an eye on. It's not what I think is going to happen right now or anytime soon. I think we are getting ready to rage. That is what everything fundamental-wise and chart-wise is telling me. But it's markets, man. You can't predict regulation. You can't predict global events, black swan events, all that kind of stuff. You never know. Um, this is the altcoin market cap. This is everything except for Bitcoin. And as you can see, we've gotten into the 618 and it keeps trying to push towards the 702. It's hanging out right there, guys. I mean, for about a week now, we've been consolidating between the 50% and the 618 and it is still trying to get up into that purple box. Like if you've been on this channel for a while, I've been talking about this. If you haven't, this is where it's all going to go down, in my opinion. I only have it marked on this chart because I'm mainly concerned with altcoins. I am not invested whatsoever in Bitcoin. I do not hold any Ether whatsoever, and I definitely do not own Doge. I do cover them on this channel because they are important to a lot of people. So that's the only reason they are even on here. Um you can see by looking over here on the watch list, everything's kind of taking a breather. I mean, the biggest downfall I really see is 5% off of something that just raged like 50%. So, I mean, that is nothing to be concerned about. That is very normal in my opinion. Um, we got XDC over here. This thing's been going off. I mean, if you would have bought it, I was just, my father-in-law was over here visiting. He hasn't seen us since we had COVID. Uh, him and my mother-in-law were here and uh, he's actually who got me back into crypto uh, what we thought saw was interesting is if you would have bought this um let's see here let's just go to march because that looks like a low if you would have bought this in march 3rd in march of 20 or let's not even look at that let's make it more dramatic where's january at where are we at if you would have came in january 1st Looks like it's that red one, yeah. If you would have came in on January 1st, you would have been getting this at 004, right? You would have made a pretty much a 4,500% increase already, guys. I mean, this thing has been ripping. Um, a lot of people that do TA and stuff would tell you that this is probably not the best investment now because it's been so overcooked. Um, I'm long on XDC. So as you guys know, everything other than what I just mentioned, I do hold except for Verge. We're going to talk about Verge in a minute though. Um, but anyway, XDC is just raged right up to the 1.68 as well, slammed into it, and now is taking a little bit of a breather. So we're going to watch that. Um, XRP, my favorite digital asset doing pretty much the same thing from the point of capitulation. We're still consolidating in between here and the 702. It's maintained the 618 area for the most part. We're going to keep an eye on that as well. Obviously, the lawsuit and everything that's going on around that, who knows, anything could happen. Um, this is Universal Gold, which I, again, I have it written down right in front of me now that I look at it. I forgot to cover yet again. Um, it's still doing pretty much the same stuff. I will actually probably be purchasing some of this um, later today, potentially. Um, we'll see. I haven't decided yet. I kind of want to see what this little little flag here that's forming does because it's been hanging out here for a couple days. I want to I see what goes on there. Um, and then we have Verge, which, you know, is telling its own story. Again, this is something we'll be covering a little bit more in length. It's doing what everybody else is doing, except 
it is sitting on top of the 702 and riding the 786. I will be picking up some Verge. There have some been uh, developments with Verge in my personal life that really have nothing to do with typical investments, but because of those, I'm going to buy some because I am now interested in it. I have been speaking with the founder of Verge recently. He's potentially going to come on the channel and tell us a little bit about the asset, what the vision is, and uh, you know what all the use cases and stuff are. They're partnered with a lot of big companies. They've had a lot going on, and um, yeah, I look forward to speaking with him even more. It's a, it's exciting stuff. He's a super nice guy, super knowledgeable on the development side of things. Blew my mind. I wound up on the phone with him until about two o'clock in the morning the other night in a really random situation, and uh, a lot of good things were talked about there. So we'll talk about all that when the time comes. Now, getting into some quick news. James Rule XRP, shout out to you, man. I told this guy is fighting the good fight right here. So, you know, we keep talking about SEC is saying that XRP in, in its entirety is a security, right? Always has been, always will be. <sighs> Excuse me, I got some lemonade going on today. Here's what's interesting. James Rule XRP has taken his XRP onto the Link2 platform through Uphold, and has purchased $10,000 worth of Ripple stock in that. Well, not, I guess it's not stock because they're not, I don't know how that works technically. It's equity. That's what we would call it, I think. Um, they're not public. They're still private. So it's private equity. So he went and bought 250 shares of Ripple at $40 a share for $10,000 worth of XRP just a couple days ago. And that's not all he did. He also bought $10,000 worth of Kraken shares using XRP. Sounds like a currency to me, guys. And just when you think that's too much, oh, looks like he also purchased $10,000 worth of Uphold equity. And by the way, guys, Uphold is $7 right now. $7. If you're an accredited investor, which I am not, I, I was going to be because I was going to take the Series 65, but the regulators came out and kind of pulled that rug on everybody and you can't use that anymore. Um, so I'm, that's not going to happen for me until I make some money. Uh, but yeah, if you're able to, I mean, this is not financial advice, nothing on this channel is financial investment advice, tax advice, anything of that nature, blah, 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 blah. Don't buy or sell anything based on anything you say or read, or I say, or you read here. That would be stupid. Do your own research, vet everything, trust nothing, vet me, vet all the influencers on Twitter and YouTube. Half of them are shilling you coins that they own. Won't even tell you that everything we talk about for the most part, I do own. So whatever. That is incredible. If I was able to do this, I would be buying a crap ton of that because I think when Coinbase finally went public, they got like a three or four hundred dollar thing, and I think they were in like the forty or fifty dollar range before that, or so. It was like a six X or something, if I can remember correctly, which is awesome. So I mean, just something to think about. Uh, Michael Val Five Links posted this: Facebook's financial executive David Marcus, back from uh, anyway. From the PayPal Galactic days, I believe, he has revealed new progress regarding the company's DM stablecoin. DM's Novi wallet has now been approved in most states. Um, I thought I had the article pulled up. Let me, I'm going to be kind of sloppy with this. I want to make sure that is included. I thought I had it pulled up already and I wanted to go over it briefly. We'll get Mr. Michael Val 5 back on here. Here we go. Yeah, let me bring this back over here so I don't get confused. Yeah, so the stablecoin, DM stablecoin and Novi Wallet are one step closer to launch. Um, it has been approved in most U.S. states and launch date has not been released for the stablecoin or the wallet, but it has go largely gained approval. And he says that we can branch out and offer a variety of other financial services in partnership with respected and well-regulated partners and expand from there. There is no launch date. Remember, they were Libra and everything went so terrible for them that they had to uh, rebrand and completely come out with the other thing. You know, the U.S. Congress was interrogating Mark Zuckerberg over Facebook's involvement. You know, there's been a lot of things that have gone on. Several project managers have left. They've been running into issues in the beginning, but things are starting to kind of smooth out. Um, it's funny how they don't even call mention them Libra anywhere in this article. Oh, the media. Oh, the media. All right, so enough of that. Um, here's a here's a uh, very interesting question that Vitalik Buterin has posed. He says, who is going to run the metaverse? And he's weighing in on big tech, and he's talking about the metaverse that Facebook is getting ready to release. 
Um, it's like a comic book type feel where you can basically upload your likeness and you can hang out in there and communicate with people. I'm really big into stuff like that. I think the social aspect of it, and I think there's going to be monetary and financial chances for, you know, there's going to be things that get developed in there that are just going to change the world in a big way. We all know that gaming is huge, but when you can actually be in an entire universe with your peers all over the world running around doing whatever you want within the confines of the program, I just think it's going to be big with today's technology. It will be backed on uh, blockchain, I believe, but I'm not positive on how that's going to go with them. I, I know a lot of them are on blockchain. Um, he says he's skeptical. What is this right here? Uh, he's talking about all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to get into that. I thought this was all... He's talking about COVID-19 supercharging the, the market and as far as accelerating its adoption, he's going into all kinds of stuff. Um, we're not gonna, I'm, I'll leave that in there. I thought it went into more about the metaverse, but it doesn't look like that's what its focus was. Uh, this is something I've been talking to people about a lot. Cardano has partnered with the Ethiopian government on a national ID blockchain system. I think this is huge. Um, we all know that COVID passports are becoming a big deal around the world. Whether I'm not getting political. I'm not weighing in on my opinion on it. It is a fact that they are being used in several major countries now. Um, I, I do believe they're already here in the States, and I do believe they're going to get rid of the paper ones. New York's already talking about it because they're so easy to be fraudulent with. Um, and quite frankly, I, I would love to see something like that put on a blockchain i think voting could be moved to blockchain i think a lot of things could go to blockchain to ensure um you know transparency um they can't be tampered with not very easily anyway it'd be very hard in comparison to the current systems that are being used for these things so um it says the current or with the in quarter three of 21 the first deployment of cardano blockchain based ids for 5 million students across 3500 schools some 750,000 teachers will also get access to the system using the ids to create records and track students academic performances i think this is awesome uh they want to compete amongst others for the whole national id system which is about 110 million people there um i am a user of global id i suggest you guys go check that out Global ID is awesome. Greg Kidd is part of that. It's pretty much his project. And what is amazing about it, um, you can have all your credentials and stuff in one place. It's really cool. Um, I'm not going to connect mine just because I'm not going to blast those types of uh, documents. But I've got my photo IDs, like passports. You can get your social on here. If you have a COVID card, that can go on here. It's tied to my Uphold account, which then gets me the XRP debit card. Um, it's really cool. You can put like your uh, college credentials and stuff like that on here. All kinds of really interesting things. And it, it's, it's basically, it, it shows me that it looks like we're going to be moving into a world where you can have something like this, a digital identity that is unique to you, that instead of having to sign up repeatedly with all this stuff over and over and over again and, and expose your, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, and expose your uh, personal information to you know potential security threats, hackers, leaks, all these other things multiple times over and over again, you will simply be able to provide your global ID, which will essentially just prove that you are who you are and kind of be like a massive form data fill type thing where it will just give all your information to where it needs to go without it being typed in and all this other stuff and then being sent like it is typically today. I think this stuff is awesome. I'm really bullish on stuff like this. Um, Bondcrypt XRP had reported here that BitConnect, which operated between January of 17 and January of 18, allegedly used a network of promoters to sell $2 billion worth of unregistered securities. The promoters received commissions, uh, and the SEC has secured judgments against three of them in the ongoing case. And he says here, can we know what those unregistered securities were? There is no mention of them in any article. And it's very interesting because they don't mention anything in here really. I mean, it talks about them handing over Bitcoin and paying back Bitcoin and stuff like this. It says nothing about what these unregistered securities that were being sold is. And then these people try to talk to us about regulatory clarity. How the hell are you going after people for unregistered securities? But you won't even tell everybody what unregistered securities they were selling. I mean, how the hell are we supposed to know what's going on? Let them, Not even just us as retail investors, but like how are these companies, these fintech companies, how do you decide 
what you're going to do. It's just crazy to me. They remain so vague so they can operate in very, uh, very like shadowy ways, man. They just can kind of do whatever they want because they've never came out and made an official stance. And I'm doing the quote fingers on that because I think it's bullshit. Um, anyway. SEC Chairman Gensler is saying that DeFi projects have a lot of centralization and war warns that they will n not reach full potential outside of regulatory laws. Um, you know, he's talking about how there's groups of entrepreneurs, programmers, and the like that are running these platforms and they should come in and work with us and get registered. Um, he pretty much talks about how because there's people that will directly benefit from the use of the platform and how we who use the platforms are relying on the people who maintain and develop the networks to have success with adoption and with getting the development to certain stages that that is relying on the efforts of another party and blah, 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 which it falls under the Howey test, which was 100 years ago almost or however long it's been and was based on oranges. So how they're using this for digital assets Cryptocurrencies and other things is beyond me. I think that is where the real issue lies. I think it's 2021, and we can all agree that the old school legacy ways of thinking are coming to an end, whether people like it or not. Um, you can look at that from across the board, and I'm not going to get into my opinions on any of these things, but you just look at it. Um, you have gender issues and discrimination, racial issues and racial discrimination, and all the disparities that are run rampant in this country and around the world. Um, I'm not asking for any opinions. Please do not leave them in my comments. I don't want to hear them. Keep them to yourself. I'm not looking to go there on this channel. I'm just saying with all those types of things, I mean, you even look at fashion, things that are allowed on television, uh, the types of clothing that people wear, the amount of uh, just all that kind of stuff has changed so much over the years. I mean, everybody... It's, it's undeniable. We are evolving as a society, and the fact that these people are trying to stop that is just ridiculous. It's all it's all about personal financial gain. There, there's literally no other reason that it should be happening. Um, here's a great thing here that DeFi proves that charities could be doing more with their money. DeFi is changing the way the sector operates by using on-ramps and integrations across blockchains to make giving to charities easier. I think this is fantastic. Um, more of the stories coming out of the crypto industry this past year have centered around enormous numbers flowing in and out of the space from stable coins topping over $100 billion, Circle raising almost half a billion in private investment in the spring, to DeFi projects like Solana completing a $3 million fundraiser. People love to discuss the huge amount of money being made in DeFi as new all-time highs break records across the board. What we don't see enough of are the use cases on how this technological innovation underpinning these financial instruments can benefit important causes and impact organizations outside of the bullish and bearish markets. Um, it's really cool. You know, they're all talking about how they're giving billions away. You know, and it's just it's really cool, man. I, I think if you could start using this, you can really show that it's allow like you'll know where the charity's going is what I'm trying to say like they won't be there's so many of these not for profit organizations out here like you know that take money from people and they say a portion of the proceeds of all this will go towards this and blah 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 and I've worked with companies who have done things like this and I know for a fact I've seen it with my own eyes that the portion of some of those proceeds could be as little as you know five percent ten percent even twenty percent but the fact of the matter is you have people giving you money for a to a good cause. That's where it should be going. And if you're not being honest about what's happening with it, shame on you, first of all. And that's why if it was on the blockchain, if the transparency and the immutability and everything else, you would not be able to do that. We would be able to sit there and watch, okay, the funds I sent to this wallet address went here. And then it looks like this wallet address is sending all the funds directly here. It looks like they're going where they're going. I think that would be a fantastic move for the industry. Um, I really do. Bitcoin is facing fresh scrutiny as police call for new powers to freeze crypto assets in the UK. Keep in mind, they just had to return all that Bitcoin money because of the appreciation in the market to that one big drug dealer. I think it came out to like hundreds of millions of dollars or something crazy. I Let me see if it even talks about it in here. It doesn't, but, uh, you know, w when that happened, I just covered that, I think, in yesterday's video. Um, yeah, they are not happy about it at all. Here's some interesting stuff going on around the world. Inside Afghanistan's cryptocurrency underground as the country plunges into turmoil. Now, we all know that America has pulled out um, and a lot of other countries are coming in to get some of their citizens out of there. We're over there 
doing whatever we're doing. Again, please do not weigh in on this on my channel. I, I will delete the comment. I do not want that type of conversation going on on here. There are other channels for that. I'm not trying to censor people from giving their opinion. Just don't do it here. This is a channel about investments, cryptocurrencies, and stuff like that, and nothing else. I don't, I don't want po politics on here. Um, but what's interesting is the IMF has basically blocked the entire, um, I think it was like half a billion dollars or something like that. I'm trying to see if it says on here. They have cut off all the money, though, from Afghanistan to try to kind of keep certain things from going on and to have a little bit of control. And what's interesting about all that is through cryptocurrencies and blockchain, and I don't know what Afghanistan's laws are. I probably should have looked into that before this video. But with all that stuff, I mean, if they've got access to an internet connection and can get a wallet, they can still have money sent to them through ways like that. And I think there's, there's good and bad sides to that. But I, this is just a... To me, it's really showcasing that this is a potential good use for cryptocurrency is if some of these organizations crack down without authority. And I'm not saying that's what the IMF is doing. Like I said, I'm not weighing in on this particular issue. I just think that from an abstract view, it does show how when some of these international organizations want to basically shut off an entire country's finances, and that includes, you know, the Taliban's there, we know ISIS and all this other craziness, Al Qaeda, whatever's running around over there. But what about all the people over there who need funds right now? They are not getting them because the country has been cut off, to my understanding. Um, so there are ways, you know, cryptocurrency could alleviate some of that stress potentially. And yeah, I'm not weighing in on the political side of this event. I'm just showing from an abstract view that cryptocurrency gives options, you know, because they're, I don't like control. I'm not a big regulatory oversight guy. Um, I do believe there has to be like a certain level of things, but, you know, I, I do think it's kind of crazy that some international organization can flip a switch and an entire nation of people no longer have access to money. I mean, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. It's, it's scary. Um, this is interesting too. Organizations are accepting crypto donations that help Afghanistan. Uh, basic needs for refugees, medical care on the ground, and visa assistance. Some crypto users are sending tokens to nonprofits and others to help the Afghan people. I think this is cool, man. Now more than ever, we need help supporting new arrivals from Afghanistan with crypto donations. Help nonprofits like Hearts at Home where it matters and where it matters most. Um, Care, an organization with offices across the world that advocates for women and girls, said almost 400,000 Afghans have been displaced during the Taliban takeover and are in need of emergency aid. Uh, one of these guys that's a founder of this thing launched a series of NFT care packages, each of which is aimed to be sold to match the organization's estimated cost covering a single family's emergency needs for a month. Um, you know, so they're, they're trying to help people over there, man. It's a really bad situation. It is a humanitarian crisis for sure. It's a... You know, I'm not going to weigh in on it. I have, I have very strong opinions about it, but that's not for here. Um, this is what's interesting, too. The Hearts and Homes for Refugees, a New York-based grassroots nonprofit, is calling for donations to assist the roughly 20,000 Afghans still in the country waiting for U.S. authorities to proceed special immigrant visas. The group hopes to raise enough funds to reallocate or to relocate Afghan families to Westchester County and currently accepts Bitcoin, Ether, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Zcash, Gemini Dollar, um, Bal, Yearn Finance, Polygon, Matic, Synthetics, and Bancor through its integration with the Giving Block. It's interesting stuff, man. To see, it's you know, I bet the community is doing a great job making sure these people get what they need. Um, then it says here, why is the Fed so scared of stable coins? Uh, news that Brian Brooks left after a fundraise proved unsuccessful. Coinbase is investing in that. This is what this whole article is about, apparently. Oh, I didn't even realize it. This is not an article. This is an audio. I'll put the description in here. I'm not going to listen to a nine-minute audio on YouTube with you guys. I will save you guys that torment. Um, uh, here we go. I thought this was a fantastic uh, depiction of what's going on around. Here's Ripple, the beautiful bride in her white dress. Here's the SEC trying to be all up on her. And then here's the ETH. The old monetary system, China and the banks with their death grip looking miserable over here. We are not going to allow this to happen. Uh, it's, it's just a funny thing, you know. I, I thought I enjoyed it. 
And then I'm going to end the video with that, man. I, like I said, Verge Currency, guys. Check them out. I don't hold any at this point. Um, I do intend on purchasing a bag. Like I said, I have been speaking with the founder. He's been super cool. We had some great conversation on the phone the other night for about two hours. I look forward to catching up with him again, potentially over the weekend. I think we might hop on Zoom and BS for a while. And uh, yeah, he said that he had no problem coming on the channel at some point and doing a little bit of an interview. And uh, I'm going to use that time to educate you guys and myself on Verge Currency because the only thing I know about it is that they partner with Travala for travel services. They're partnered with Pornhub. Um, he posted the other day that he was signing some article, um, and or not an article, but some paperwork, and his name was being signed right next to Manny Pacquiao. And, I mean, that's pretty cool. I've seen him with Change Now and Now Payments and some other stuff, and I'm, apparently they do a lot of uh, charitable stuff, and I'm just very interested to learn more from him. So stay tuned for that. I'll be sure to put out some sort of... Uh, like a not I don't even know what the word would be like a announcement letting you guys know when if and when that will actually be taking place maybe it'll be live I don't know I'll have to discuss that with him but that's going to do it for me guys I'm going to get off here and enjoy the rest of my Saturday I hope you guys do the same hope everybody's staying safe stay healthy um and yeah I'll talk to you guys later I should probably do a video tomorrow I might not Sunday's football season's pretty much here guys my Washington football team the defense was dominant last night Offense was, you know, hitting and missing here and there, but I'm very, uh, very pumped up for football. Anybody that knows me personally knows that I rage during football season. So Sundays are probably going to not be happening for me moving forward. Um, that being said, the season's still a few weeks away, so maybe I'll just keep rolling until that happens. Uh, and I'll talk to you guys later, man. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.